Hello there players, guess what? I've made not one, not two, but three awful buttons. Those buttons are the epitome of slowness, frustration, and just sheer unfriendliness. Why, you may ask? Because that's an excellent practice. We are going to use stuff that is really important to learn as a game developer. So make sure you stay until the end to know exactly what it is. I'm in Unity, I'm going to show you exactly how the three buttons work, and then we go into the details of how it is actually implemented. The first button is called the shrinker. As soon as you move the mouse, the button shrinks, it becomes unclickable. So you have to stop moving before it grows back, okay? This is awful, it's slow. For sure, never do a button like that. Once you click on it, you can manage to click on it, you get a nice celebration because you deserve it. That's the first button. Let me show you the second button. It's more fluffy. You cannot click on it. If I click on it with my mouse, nothing happens. I have to pet it. You need to pet, pet, pet. And then after a few times, he's happy. So if you just pet a little bit, maybe he doesn't like that. So you have to pet like really like nicely, like a good big dog, all right? And then he's happy and then he clicks. Let's go. And then the last one, the last one is probably the most awful one. Uh, it's not the, I mean, there is a button, but the button spins the wheel and then depending on where it lands, your click is registered or your click is in your heart. Like any good mobile game. We have 50% click chance that it works and otherwise doesn't work. So let's spin the wheel. That's awkward. I'm going to show later how this is implemented. No click, we click again. I mean, for the demo, I have to show that the click works, so we're going to spin until it clicks. It might take a while. Oh, this might, this might be it. Mm. I think this will be it. Okay, and that's a click. So now you successfully clicked. Great for user interfaces of all, yeah. All right, let me now show you how it works. What do I see there? You're not subscribed? Please like and subscribe. The worst game buttons, here we go. So the first one that I showed you, the shrinker, it, you implement it uh, like this. It's always one script. Each button was just one script. I'm going to show you exactly how it works. You have a standard mono behavior, you start like that. And then we're going to add a few things. So the first thing we're going to add is a reference to the button and a reference to a vector tree which will store the last mouse position. So you want to know where the mouse we eat was and where it is now, so you can compute the difference between the previous and the current position. So in awake we get the reference of the button and in start we just store the mouse position wherever it is. So on enable we add a listener to the button and on disable, we remove the listener. We could also do this in the editor, but recently I tried to basically stay away from the editor as much as possible and put all in code to see how it goes. So the clicked basically just calls celebration. It is spawning these particles and make this nice animation. Then comes the method that is actually shrinking the button. So at the top of the update method, so we start in the update method, we want to take the current mouse position and then we compute the delta. The delta can just be the distance between the current and the last mouse position. This is very easy. Then we just scale it by a factor and check if it is, for example, less than one. So then we will lerp, vector3.lerp, from our local scale to the vector one. So we want to scale to one. So this will make it uh, grow. This means if you have no movement, the button will grow to its initial size of one. Otherwise, well, we will shrink it. So to shrink it, we will also use the vector3.lerp. We lerp from the local scale to the vector.0. So we really lerp until the button is completely flattened out in all axes. And then finally, we just store the current mouse position as the last mouse position, so we are ready for the next frame. That's how it is. That's all there is to shrink over time a button. This is very easy. The second one, the, 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 the fluffy button or the pet or whatever. So this one we need to pet, right? Again, a mono behavior, it's just one script. We add a few interfaces at the top. Those are interfaces because in C-sharp, interfaces by convention start with I. So we have added I pointer down handler, I pointer exit handler, up handler, and 
move handler. There are a few more and uh, each one you have to implement on pointer down, on pointer up, exit and move. So those will be called whenever the mouse is uh, doing this certain action on that object. Next to that, well, we are going to add a few variables. We need to know if we are currently petting, so if we are in the process of petting, then we will store the start position and the end position. And then finally, we are going to implement each method. And each method is very simple. So when we on pointer down, which means that the mouse button goes down, we say, oh, we are starting to pet. So we're going to store the start position where that event has been registered on the button. And on pointer up, we do the opposite. So we'll store the end position where the button, lift it up, and we'll call end petting. So end petting will also be called on pointer exit. On pointer exit is if, well, this is my button. If I have my mouse inside and I exit, well, this is calling this method exit. You know, it's just like a trigger or any other thing in Unity that works the same way. And finally, on pointer move, only if we are in the process of petting, we're going to check the move and the move is just going to update uh, the end position to know where we are currently. Okay, and end petting right now is just going to put the petting to false. We're going to evaluate it in the next one, the next slide. So. To evaluate, we need a few things. We need to know, let's say, oh, what's the threshold? Like what is the minimum petting distance that we want to register? How many counts of pets or how many times you want to pet to register a click? Because remember, we are making awful buttons. The timeout, because uh, let's say you pet three times, you have a break, well, you need to start again. You need to pet again. Like the, the little button needs to be pet in a very serious way. So, so take petting seriously, please. Then we're going to store the current pet count. So how many? Pets, petting we did. And finally, we store the current timer. So we store when we need to reset the timer. On update, it's very simple. If the time passed the reset deadline, we are going to reset the timer and then reset the petting. So end petting, now we modify it. We add the rest of the code from line 24 to 33. So we're going to compute the distance between the start of petting, the end of petting, and then we just check the distance. So if the distance is bigger than our threshold, we register it as a successful Petting, we increase the count, then we print the distance because why not? We are debugging, let's print it. We can reset the timer because that's good. You have time to for the next pet. And then if uh, we petted the button enough times, we can call the final click event. So reset timer is very easy. We say that it's a time dot time plus our timeout. I like this way of just setting the deadline and then reset petting. We just put the petting to zero and then click. We just reset also the petting, but we celebrate because the click happened, so that's great. That's this one, easy. Last one, the spinner. The spinner, again, simple script, and basically that's all there is nearly to this script. So let's go step by step. First, we need a reference to the rec transform, and we need the click range that we are going to store, what part of the spinning wheel is considered a click and what part is not considered a click. So everything that will be between this range will be like minimum, maximum. This, I store it as a vector two. We will use it to evaluate if we are in the click range or not. So to animate the spin, I'm going to use DoTween because DoTween, I think it's one of the best libraries for uh, tweening and for doing those kind of animations. We are doing it in a bit more data-driven way. So the first step I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a few steps. So I'm going to say, oh, my first step will be, I'm going to rotate minus 50, so in this direction, and then the next step I'm going to rotate a few times, like at least 10 times in the other direction, plus some random range. So the wheel will do like this, which will go back 50 and then turn very fast forward. And then at the end, the last step is that I'm going to rotate one more step at a different speed just to do the slowdown. So now for DoTween, we create a sequence. So we say it is relative because we want to always add more rotation to everything. And then we do our steps. So the first step will be to take the step one, rotate for two seconds in this direction. And then the step two will be rotate 10 seconds in the other direction, and then seven seconds again for the slowdown. And when it is completed, well, we say the spinning is done. We will check the angle and based on the angle, we compare the angle to whatever we put in the click range. So when that thing on the top lands in the click range, well, then we celebrate as well. And then the spin itself, this is what we will put on the button that is under the spinner. So under the spinner, when we click, well, we check, are we spinning currently? If we are spinning, then we don't spin one more time. Otherwise it's going to be a mess. 
We set spinning to true and then we animate the spin, which calls the method above. And here you go, three unconventional buttons. Let me summarize for you the skills you need as a game developer. And those are pretty simple things. One is mastering lerping. You need to be comfortable lerping anything, anywhere, from rotation to uh, positions to maybe even color or other attributes on shaders and so on. And the second skill is tweening. So tweening is very similar to lerping. It's just that, well, you can use a tweening library to make, let's say, your lerping game much easier. And do tween is my favorite. There are others, of course. Try them out, see what you like most, and just use at least one tweening library. You will see it will make your life so much easier. You can animate your entire UI with this technique. You can animate a lot of game objects with this technique. You're going to save so much time if you just know how to lerp, how to tween. This is a really important skill uh, to have. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Go work on your game and I will see you next time.